On a cold January day in 2008, this group of Missouri National Guard soldiers is participating in a training exercise at Camp Atterbury in Indiana. Their convoy is attacked by other U.S. soldiers acting as insurgents, and the unit suffers mock casualties. The exercise is designed to prepare the men for a mission deep into the rugged mountains of eastern Afghanistan. Though heavily armed with state-of-the-art weapons, their mission isn't to intercept the Taliban or find Osama bin Laden. Instead, they will help Afghani farmers learn to increase their crop yields, improve the health of their animals, and add value to their raw agricultural goods. Uh, I was at a, a conference for the National Guard in August, and they made the announcement they were looking for people with an ag background to do this particular mission. Um, to go over to Afghanistan and, and at the time we thought help farmers teach them how to farm. And um, because of my educational background, I thought, well, that, that would be an interesting mission to go on. Um, I kind of I kind of kept quiet about it. You know, you never want to volunteer to go anywhere. At the end of January 2008, Master Sergeant Godsey, a 20-year veteran of the Missouri National Guard, left his wife and three daughters for a one-year deployment in Afghanistan. He joined nearly 50 other volunteers who made up the 935th Agribusiness Development Team, or ADT. Deployed to Nangarhar province, the team would be less than 50 miles from the Pakistani border and Osama bin Laden's suspected stronghold. The soldiers at the core of the unit were chosen because of their agricultural backgrounds. The military capitalized on Godsey's rank education, and current job as an economist at the University of Missouri Center for Agroforestry and put him in charge of assigning projects to various team members. The idea for the ADT was conceived by retired Missouri National Guard General Charles Cruz, now president of the Missouri Farm Bureau, Missouri National Guard General King Sidwell, and director of the Army National Guard General Clyde Vaughn. I can't tell you how proud uh, we are of you. This is a huge priority. You stand right on the cusp of making a huge difference in Afghanistan. Though there are now agribusiness development teams from several states, Missouri's National Guard was the first to be tasked with improving the quality of life for Afghani farmers. At first, the soldiers thought they would be teaching basic farming techniques, but after arriving in Afghanistan, things changed. Those farmers have been farming the same way for 2,000 years. They, they know how to farm. Um, we thought we were going to teach them how to become 20th century or 21st century farmers, but that really wasn't the case. The members of the ADT realized local farmers were way beyond the need for basic education and that techniques used on large U.S. farms would be inappropriate for the smaller operations terraced into nearby mountainsides. Working with local and regional government officials, projects were identified and arrangements made with local contractors to begin construction. Each project was approached with the idea of replicating the job at another location. Funding for the effort came from money set aside to rebuild the war-torn country. A variety of projects were undertaken, including stocking a local veterinary clinic with new equipment, building a slaughter facility for local producers, and working out the details for a fish hatchery. Not unlike U.S. farmers trying to capture more of the profits from their labor, the men of the Missouri ADT hoped their work would help break the cycle of Afghanis selling their raw commodities to nearby countries and buying the processed products back at higher prices. Sergeant Russell Pierce from Mayview, Missouri, a cattle rancher and row crop farmer, was placed in charge of the fish hatchery project. After searching the internet for information, he began work with the Nangahar Fish Producers Association. Even when I started that, it's hard to get out of the, you know, 21st century American mindset where you're saying, well, we need to, you know, get some electronics, this, and, and uh, we need to computerize that or get aeration pumps, all electric. Their electrical system over there, their, their power grid is, is very poor to a point that they don't even count on it. Some thought was given to upgrading an existing hatchery, but it was determined the facility was in a floodplain and a new location had to be found. 
When the ADT left in late December 2008, negotiations for a new facility just outside of Jalalabad were in progress. Once in Afghanistan, the ADT considered the knowledge they were imparting might be used to grow more opium poppies, the main ingredient in the illegal drug heroin. But after asking local farmers about the issue, they were assured poppy growing was a criminal problem, not an agricultural one. With world wheat prices what they were this past year, um, wheat actually was more profitable than poppy, so that probably helped us, I don't know. But I guess you gotta look at it in terms of incentives. There's a reason why people grow poppy. And, and typically they grow it, number one, either because that's the only alternative they have, or number two is because they're being forced to grow it. But the focal point of the mission became water management for electrical power generation and irrigation. To help bring electricity to rural regions of the country, the team completely refurbished two small hydroelectric dams. The generating plants now supply power to the nearby villages of Sengani and Omar Kel, and to the small grain mills installed at each dam site. They don't know really who, who we were, and by going into these communities and helping them, getting them electricity, getting them a, a wheat mill or a corn mill or whatever, um, you know, it's, it's winning the hearts and minds, and that's what we were trying to do. The one project Godsey and his team thought might help the most was the installation of check dams to hold back spring meltwater. The water would then be available for irrigation during the heat of the region's sweltering summers when the mercury often passes 130 degrees. Three optimal locations were found high in the nearby mountains. To reach these sites, the team often would drive several hours and, once the trail became too rough for vehicles, walk several more. And I think there were times that we were in areas that were um, definitely not exactly friendly to U.S. forces, but because of who we were and what we were doing and the reputation that we um, built quickly among those individuals over there, I, I think we, we got away with a lot of stuff that we shouldn't have. Gratification aside, ADT members are quick to count the cost of their mission against the benefits of their work. Despite the Pentagon's commitment of more than a million dollars, Gatsi continues to weigh the risks and rewards. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that the mission. It, it was dangerous. It was challenging. Um, it was frustrating at times. But it was one of those missions where you really felt like you were making an impact and you're doing um, something for people, and um, you felt like uh, uh, you're making progress. And so, do I want to go back? Yeah, I'd go back. I don't know if I want to go back for another year, but I'd go back. For Market to Market, I'm David Miller.